Hello guys, and it is that panda guy, and I'm here again with another video, and I am just, it is my pleasure to, you know, make this video for you guys, and I do want to say that this is actually my first time being on the red side, I was caught off guard, and I was like, dude, what, what the heck, because I, I'm so used to being blue, I've never been on the red team, and this actually really made me a little funky, right, like, it, it had me, it had me on my funky shorts, you know, I just, Ah, it was it was a little it was a little scary for me, but you know we we're gonna do this, guys, and let's just let's just get get rocking and rolling. So we came in, and I do want to say that we lost this. Obviously, we got freaking collapsed. We got I got bent over and just raw dogged. You know, it just happened. But yeah, okay. Now we're gonna hop into it. So basically, what I was doing was I was splitting my accounts into two separate squadrons. So I was doing three accounts to my you know, first marker and then three accounts to my second marker. And actually one big reason that I did this was to counter um, Pickle because, you know, obviously I had to change my game plan when I saw that it was Hot, who was uh, our enemy or whatever. And what I was actually hoping that he would do is that I was hoping that he wasn't actually going to do what he did do because this is like a big reason why we did lose. And it was basically him going into garrison. He was being coming like garrison captain to some of the main structures. And it made it really hard for us to actually just overcome that, right? Because he's too strong. And it's it's just tough, especially for the average player, to fight that and have any good trades, you know, anything, right? Like, and it's just it's just really tough when you got a monster holding something and you don't have the players with the strength to back it up. And basically what happened was he held those. But, you know, back to what I was saying, my strategy would be to actually hold down him with like three or four accounts. And that was my big plan. I was going to have three accounts assigned to holding down Pickles Marches. And then I'd have the rest kind of running through the other players. And that was what I hoped. Because honestly, if they hadn't did what they did, it was a big chance that we probably could have won this. Because I mean, to be fair, the other players like, you know, 50 mil, whatever it might be, right? And it's way easier to hold these structures than if like, um, if Pickle was like actually the garrison captain. And it just made it really hard for us to win, you know? And, you know, they did good because they did win and it was pretty nasty they freaking smacked us and there wasn't much i could have done honestly in this situation though we could have of course done better we could have gotten better point trades though it's not like i'm looking to get better points it's more about winning right because uh, i talk about a lot of this stuff in my other video if you guys watch the shorter version but basically what happens is pickle holds four of the main outposts and he holds one of the like smaller outposts that earns less points and if we really wanted better points i could have held all those little outposts right with my main account and i could have reinforced with my alts but of course we wouldn't win like that because they have like all the main point the main point areas right and even if he doesn't pull out of his outpost to come like smack me out of mine and i get good reinforcements that won't matter if he's just you know their whole team's gaining all those points from the main outpost then they're going for incubator then they're farming zombies and, you know i want to also mention that my team did a worse job at farming zombies and getting incubator points and that's also where we fell off at because they got so many more points over us and, you know, that's why you usually want to have a team assigned to specifically going for, you know, maybe zombies or, like I was saying, just incubator, right? Because they got 10,000 points from incubator, and I think they got, like, 14,000 from farming zombies, which is, when you think about that, that's, like, what, tw almost, like, 24,000, 25,000 points, which is just insanity, and that puts them in such a lead. I also want to mention that Pickle actually sends a rider march, and that was really smart here, and I think I wasn't paying attention to this structure either, but basically what happens is he beats me to it, and I mean, the fact that it's on our side of the field, but we don't we don't beat him to it, it's kind of like, kind of goes to show, you know, like we probably could like have teams assigned for maybe balancing between structures, because if you guys don't know, some people might train up tier one troops, just to have like a few troops traveling through the um, map fast and just capture these buildings as fast as possible because every second matters at getting these points. And, you know, that's kind of something that we fell off in. If you guys, like I said, don't see Pickle running up here with a rider march, I could have probably sent a rider march, hopped in here before he did because it was on our side of the map. And we had like really main advantage here. And I actually had these marches sitting idle here for a second, which is just stupid. But I mean, obviously I'm controlling what? seven accounts so of course i'm not as focused on my main account 
And that was a big issue, you know. And if you guys aren't looking at the map, you can see that we actually, actually, I think we do take it, but I think the wrong person took the outpost. So I actually wasn't holding outpost when I should have been holding it, and I should have been garrison captain, and they got smacked out so hard, and that was actually like a big issue. And I wasn't paying attention to the march sitting right outside the outpost. So of course, um, I didn't actually end up taking it at a time, and you know, they end up just they end up just smacking us out. And that was a big issue, and we just got ran over. I do want to say, you know, while I'm talking, that I, bravo to, you know, HOT, of course, they did a good job, and I mean, I, I gotta give it to them, of course, they had good teamwork, and a lot of their members were just, you know, working well together. I will say that one big issue that I, or one thing that I was gonna exploit if Pickle had gone into, like, what I wanted him to do, and playing more, I guess, attack-sided, right, like, and he was being less defensive, is what I was gonna do was, I, I had the thought process, at least, that generally, you know, my accounts are stronger than their average member. And I don't so try to say this to sound cocky, but it's true, right? And I, you know, these accounts have tier five and whatever it might be. And I was basically having the thought that it would have been easy. Well, not easy, but easier for me to like have a uh, squadron of accounts running in there. And I also want to mention that we are an older region. So of course the heroes that I have on my accounts are generally better, right? Like my account heroes are better. I have more troops for each account. So, you know, whereas like may maybe a lot of these people would only send like two or three marches. I could send four, five if I wanted, but I only send four because I don't want to send bad heroes like into a battlefield because then I'll just burn out really fast and then I won't be able to send out more marches later on, right? Like, so don't send a bunch of like, don't send more marches just to send more marches. Only do it if you have like the heroes to con, you know, that are actually like good because the trades are going to be good. And if you're sending a bunch of heroes that are bad, like if you send a bunch of gather heroes, even if you have a million troops, you're going to be taking bad trades and there's no reason to do that. It's, it's stupid, right? And I don't, you know, I don't want to <laughs> sound rude, but it is pretty stupid if you do that. But um, yeah, basically I was thinking that I was going to hold down Pickle with like three of my accounts, hopefully. And then I was going to be able to take on the rest of his members. And unfortunately, that isn't what happened. And also, if you guys don't know, I'm slithering two groups of my accounts off to the side. If you can't tell, both of those groups that are actually slithering around the corner are actually heading... Well, one was going for structures, and I was going to use these accounts over here to go for these structures. And honestly, if I was being smart, I would have taken over the helipad on the top left side instead of the top right side. Because if you guys didn't notice, there's way more people down here, and I could have actually taken out these people and kind of prohibited them from being able to reinforce as much. Whereas, like, top um, right helipad only had maybe four five people up there compared to these guys where they had I think maybe even 10 people just gathered up on this helipad so honestly if I had targeted them swarmed their bases down that would have been massive because we would have gotten rid of you know one reinforcements and two I would have booted their bases back into the home zone as well as hopefully taking over the helipad and you know the thing is pickle was not reinforcing these helipads he didn't care about holding them because obviously he's going to hold the structures which you know give points and the helipads aren't as important for him, especially when you consider that we lack the manpower to actually overpower him on these like operation bases and whatnot. You know, it's not easy for us to overpower him here. So it does make sense for him to just stay on the operation bases. And even if they're in the home zone, it's not going to change much if we can't stop the reinforcements from coming in and just them taking back over these structures. You know, it'd be just a game of cat and mouse and it would just be us hitting these things over and over and over but I do take over this helipad which was a good thing because I was able to kind of get a foothold in foothold in the enemy like area and I was able to kind of have easier access to sending out my troops faster but I didn't take advantage of it to the fullest and it's why we one big reason why we lost so hard because I mean I wasn't like you know and I mean I'm not obviously gonna think as you know, smart as I might when I'm only running one account compared to, let's say, seven accounts. Because obviously, I'm splitting myself into seven areas, and I don't give myself as much time as I want to think. And I know I mention this a lot, but it's true. I kind of limit myself. Although I'm able to, like, have more firepower, I do limit this the amount of thinking I can give myself. And I kind of have to go towards fast thinking action instead of taking out, you know, maybe giving myself a minute and being like, okay, this is the best approach, where, like, 
I, I can only move now, 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 right? Because the second one account is done, maybe attacking something, I have to send these three accounts to attack another operation base. Or I have to send them to attack another, um, you know, helipad or I have to send them to attack these bases, blah, 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 right? Because basically I'm splitting myself so much and I don't want my marches getting just swarmed out the field or anything. And it just doesn't make sense for me to do that. And, you know, of course, I do make a lot of stupid decisions while playing Pompeii. But when I look back, of course, I can always just tell like, of my mistakes, obviously. And it's always going to be easier like that. You can always look back at what you've done and be like, oh, it would have been smarter if I did this. But, you know, obviously not much I can do in that that case. You know, it's obviously just going to happen. Also, I want to say that these guys are defending this helipad with Hank. Hank? Who defends with Hank? This thing melted so fast. And I think they had the wrong person as well reinforcing it. I think that was obviously a fault that the R4s weren't watching it. I will say that Pickle, from what I heard, was with his family. So, of course, he wasn't able to like be as attentive. And maybe if he had noticed that, he could have changed who was the garrison captain in there. Either way, I would have beaten it like 90% sure. Like, I would have beaten that either way. But, of course, the trades would have been better. It would have lasted longer. Just anything, right? And you need an R4 or an R5 to actually swap around who is holding these garrisons. So, of course, they can't, like, change who was holding as garrison captain on those, like, helipads or structures without Pickle. And Pickle was probably more focused on actually holding these operation bases or outposts, whatever it might be. And that's kind of just the point I wanted to, like, get across you know like you really need those r4s or r fives to kind of be like attentive and actually swapping that stuff around and that's actually something i might need to like appoint someone for being either putting like pings in the map to direct people or maybe sorry i'm um, putting pings on the map or even just looking at operation bases or outposts to change who is garrison captain because you obviously want the person with the best technology or whatever to be reinforced to be holding the structure reinforcing it blah 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 right like you want the strongest person to be the one taking the brute force of it and actually being the person whose technology matters on the operation base because like if you guys don't know obviously the person who's holding it and is like captain of it is the person whose technology is like affecting all the troops in it and under them and of course like their heroes are going to matter all that kind of stuff right and you want like you want a competent garrison captain and that can be a big issue on the field and i'll try to do this video as long as possible by the way i know i'm blabbing a lot and i hope that this is kind of helpful for people who are trying to learn and just you know figure out more stuff in this game so I do hope like my blabbing does help and I'm going to blab as much as I can until I run out of stuff to say and then I'll just leave you guys in silence probably because I don't know what to say and my throat starts hurting and I actually get hot because I turn off my fan to make sure that you guys aren't hearing that over me you know so I just like I hope you guys understand if I do cut it off it's because like it's hard for me to keep this going for a full hour straight but yeah. Um, but I mean, I, I could have done a lot better, be it like re, um, rallies and stuff. And these rallies, I'm pretty sure are, you only need to run one minute rallies, I'm pretty sure in Pompeii, which is something I really neglect to remember a lot. And, you know, of course, swarms are actually good because I was talking with someone and although it's good to make sure that you're running rallies, if you're not swarming stuff at all, you're going to be doing worse. Like if you're comparing a rally to a swarm, at least in the case of Pompeii, this is a fast based game. You have one hour to get everything done, do everything you need and just all that. Right. But basically like, I don't know. I, I kind of wanted to just say that because you're going to have to like, make sure you're actually going at a faster pace and swarms are kind of necessary because you can't always wait on rallies and it doesn't always mean the rally is going to win especially if these people are good at keeping something full compared to like a swarm where maybe you have like three million troops on that thing or compared to you know of course like in a rally where you might have let's say a million two million troops right where it's all from the same rally you don't have these swarms going on where they're kind of hitting damage and you know kind of neglecting the count and just taking counter damage and just stuff like that i mean like there's a lot of troops there's a lot of teamwork you have all these different heroes have all these like strong players just beating it down at a faster rate compared to a rally where although of course they could take it down that's dependent on if the other team is reinforcing properly if you're keeping that rally full and just focusing all your energy on keeping a rally full at least in Pompeii isn't smart right like uh, you you really need swarms like if it comes to Pompeii you 100% need these swarms running like if I can choose between a rally or just having swarms running throughout the whole Pompeii I'm 1 million percent choosing swarms 
But that doesn't mean to say that if you're not, for example, like running rallies and swarms together, that it, you won't perform better. And that is the case, right? Like you want some strong players kind of running rallies on their outposts or whatever, be it to like distract the enemy or even just like take it over, right? Because like, of course, you're going to want to kind of distract where they're focusing, where they're looking at, and rallies would be a good way for that. And I will say a thing about rallies is since it does take a minute, it might actually give the enemy more time than as if you didn't um, re like as if you just swarm them, right? Because if you're re rallying it, right, it's gonna make it's gonna attract attention. Like people are gonna look over at it and they're gonna be like, "Yo, these guys are about to hit this with a rally. We better start sitting marches over here, right?" Whereas if I'm swarming something, it's a lot easier for me to kind of just waddle over there and not have them reinforce in time. Just stuff like that. I mean, I hope I don't sound stupid, but I mean, it just makes sense to me. <laughs> but yeah, um, and I also have a big problem where what I'll do is I'll filter in my troops. So I'll let my, my marches in go in one by one to hit a structure. And that is really just not smart, right? Because one, that first march that might get there already would be taking pretty bad trades. Like that march that gets there first is going to be taking bad trades because it doesn't have all these other marches hitting it together. And I actually did this a lot in this video. And you're going to see that when I'm swarming pickle structure that's near me. But basically what happens is I let my marches filter in and they get melted one by one. And basically what I should have done was I should have gathered my marches all outside the thing and did a grandiose swarm at the same time, right? Like, you know, for example, 30 marches instead of 40 marches going in one by one by one and then melting like 20 of those marches before my other 20 are even there right and it's just it's just small things like that that make up the battle and I make huge mistakes and I always I, I've been making a lot of those mistakes and I hope I do improve on kind of fixing that and I mean I do improve in general on that kind of stuff if you guys haven't noticed I have been kind of making improvements when it comes to that. And you guys see right here, I'm slithering in one by one by one. I don't just gather my marches up and I could have gathered them back there and been able to overpower these guys pretty easily, but they just swore my marches one by one as they go in. And you know, that kind of screws me because I was being stupid. I was being stupid and I got overwhelmed and I'm giving one free injuries. I'm losing out on troops that I could have used more efficiently somewhere else. And it's just not, they're just not smart choices I could have made. And, you know, I've started improving, of course, you know, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a human just like you guys, right? Like, I make a lot of mistakes, and I do try to improve on that. And if you guys don't notice, like, that's kind of made, like, that's kind of shown from, like, my first Pompeii to even now, where I do gather my marches a lot more, or I start working my accounts together, instead of just swarming down structures, which I still do with that a lot, but I've... I've gotten better at playing more defensive. I've gotten better at going through my accounts when I'm on my com on my computer. Because, for example, I would not defend at all back then. But like, even like looking at when Pickle has like um, he will send like a march right, and I will go through all my accounts, send one of my marches from each of the accounts, which is usually like an infant march or a range march, and then I start you know kind of making sure that march just stays in there, and then I start sending my other marches to swarm other structures. And that kind of just goes to show that I've improved somewhat be it even if a little right because of course you know i i could be doing better i could be doing other stuff differently and it is my fault at the end of the day you know i i do make mistakes and i own up to it i have to own up to it because if you don't own up to your mistakes you're not going to improve and that's like the big truth and like, i kind of wanted to just say that because like you got to own up to your mistakes you got to take you got to take feedback you got to take criticism i don't know if like i know a lot of people don't actually like do that well and i i mean i've had issues with it of course myself but i do want to say that if like you're getting criticized by your members don't feel offended take that advice and understand that they're just trying to help you and just make their life better your life better and make everything easier because you know you're actually hurting them by not playing as smart as you could you know like you're hurting your alliance and they don't they don't like that you know and i had to take criticism at times I've been told by Shelby himself that, you know, for example, Island Raid, I played really recklessly there. I played like a lunatic. And of course, that could that could also be because I hadn't had like, um, I hadn't had an event like that. And I'd been waiting for over a year and I had been really bored. And, you know, of course, that's not an excuse, but I had just, you know, been a pv I, I just wanted to pvp and then basically i cut myself off i made everybody my enemy 
And, you know, at the end of the day, it, people don't, I, I don't talk about this, but I am more than just a leader, right? Like, I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm more than just a YouTuber. I'm a leader, right? Like, I don't, I don't just upload these videos. I am the leader of an alliance and I have to make sure that I'm actually taking care of my alliance, planning actually good strategies and just stuff like that, right? Like, because obviously I'm not, I'm not the smartest with some of these stuff. And I make a lot of mistakes and it is stupid of me. Like I make really stupid mistakes that I could improve on. And yeah, I mean, I hope you guys kind of, kind of get like, can understand that a bit, you know, what I was talking about. But of course, I'm more than just a player. I'm a leader. I'm more than just someone who does videos. I'm a leader and I have to make sure that I put, come up with strategies. I, you know, actually make alliances. I do that kind of stuff, right? I got to I got to, you know, just take care of my my members and I hope that kind of just doesn't sound stupid I'm, I'm being I'm being all dumb right now but yeah that's that's I just wanted to kind of say that and you know you have to take this criticism to improve and it's what I've had to do and you know it's it's not it's not easy sometimes you want to you want to be prideful but you can't be prideful if you want to be a winner <laughs> Um, but yeah, basically right here, he takes helipad and this was a big issue and I think they started filling in the helipad and I wouldn't be able to, been able to swarm it down, but I didn't have enough marches home. I didn't have enough troops home and this was a big issue and I kind of was forced to march back over here and try to get the helipad down before he teleported in, but unfortunately Pickle ported in and honestly, this wasn't the worst case scenario because case scenario, what the heck am I saying? But, um, basically this wasn't the worst case because clearly pickle is like focused on reinforcing these structures and he wouldn't be focused on burning my accounts down which would have been a real issue if he kind of got rid of me and forced me out of this area and then i was just marching from home zone but you know of course he didn't have his marches home and that was a lucky one but he still did pour in and that actually became a big issue because he was close enough to just keep sending this march over and over towards the close outpost and that kind of put me in a bad spot like helipad is actually really essential to how the battle flows because it will change so much and it kind of forces me to play play stupider right like i have to play really stupid at times just because of helipad and it can be a big issue you know like if someone takes helipad from you and they can teleport in that will become a big issue, especially if they're like constantly trying to take out helipad or they're attacking nearby structures or if they're even burning your members down, right? Because if I take over a helipad and I can somehow hold it for the hundred and I think it's 20 seconds that you need to capture it, I can teleport in and just terrorize their members, force them into their home zone, which is just really bad. And you really don't want someone getting into these helipads. Um, but you also don't want to like over focus them because if you're more focused on your helipads than your actual structures, you're likely to lose because you're going to not be getting as many points as you need. But yeah, I mean, I just kind of wanted to ramble on about that for a little bit. But I also don't know if I mentioned this, but um, oh, yeah, actually I did. But it was just about the thing where like having more marches isn't better, right? Like it's not always better to have more marches in the field, especially if you're going to exhaust all those marches or all your troops before the time period that you actually need it. Because um, so I'm going to give you guys an example. Basically... I will send maybe three, four marches, and that's with like some of my strongest heroes. Whereas if I sent a fifth march, it would have been with okayish heroes. But one, I could use those troops that I might be sending in this fifth march on those other marches when they're refreshing or whatnot, right? Because like for example, if a march dies and I only have like 130k range here um sorry range troops left in that march i could have sent it out with a full range march maybe right because i put those troops in a different march which was mediocre and had mediocre heroes and just stuff like that i feel like it's 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 just like really rough and also want to kind of talk about um actually garrison heroes i don't I don't, I don't even know what i'm talking about i feel like i keep talking about different stuff but one thing i do actually want to talk about is garrison heroes so or not garrison heroes but garrison captains and you guys i might notice it here but pickle is doing an amazing job at being a garrison captain and that can be so much better than actually just playing more offensive right because in this case we are the weaker we are the weaker team right we are the weaker alliance we have the weaker stronger members because obviously if you're wanting to overthrow these whales you're going to need some strong players to actually just do damage be able to rally be able to swarm whatever it might be and take decent trades at least like even if you're taking bad trades you want to take decent trades and in our case it was it, they were bad trades they were bad trades sometimes decent but mostly bad trades 
And that was just the issue here. You have you have to have your strong garrison captains holding these main structures that are necessary and crucial. And I kind of want to note that for people who are watching this and might actually want to use this for their own Pompeii, own, you know, whatever it might be. And I kind of want to just note that for people. But, you know, you, you're going to want to have uh, your strongest or like second strongest or whoever it might be holding these structures as garrison captain. Make sure that you have an R4 or an R5, making sure that they are garrison captain because you do not want weak people actually holding these structures. That would be just really stupid and throwing it, throwing you under the bus. But, you know, you want their technology to make sure that these structures are strong, making it anti-swarm, especially for like the average player. Because, for example, if Pickle is holding these structures, he has max research. He has, you know, tier six and all of that. Even my 50 mil accounts, which are like deep tier five, some of them are like in that last tree. Some of them are still in siege. But either way, they have really good research or really decent research compared to the average player. I would like call them, of course, above average. I think my alts are above average, and I'm not. I'm not trying to say that to sound cocky, but it's you know, it's it's true. And basically, I was taking. I think like, I think pickle would take one to three or one to four trades on those accounts, even during swarms, which is just insane. Like to consider like how good his trades are on my accounts, you know. But the point is, like an average player would not be able to swarm these things down, especially so if the reinforcements. Are just good right like if you're having really good reinforcements on um it, okay so if you have your team reinforcing these structures properly nobody's gonna be able to take them like especially if the enemy is very vastly inferior to your strong core players and that's really just an important word right like your core players mean so much and i don't want to say it like they're gonna solo like this whole thing but the impact that these players can have is actually just massive and the impact like that pickle has for example is in insane because i really think that it's very possible and may like pretty likely that hot would have lost without pickle because even if they do outnumber us we do have like strength compared to their average players or even their stronger players right but when it comes to pickle or even his other tier six player because i do want to mention that i know there's two tier six players in hot um the big issue is like trying to take down these garrisons you know like i can't we can't overpower their garrisons and it's as simple as that like even with my group of accounts it's hard for me to swarm these things down imagine how it is for my other members who might want to swarm these structures down right like it's it's really just bad and we are just put in a bad spot and i can't do anything i can't do anything i'm just struggling over here right and I don't know. I feel like I feel like that's as simple as it gets. Like having these strong garrison captains can do so much, especially when the enemy is vastly inferior, be it technology wise, hero wise, whatever it might be. And that makes the biggest difference ever in the battlefield. And like I was saying, they can't solo. They can't do everything themselves. They need a good team behind them who is either good at reinforcing, good at field presence, whatever it might be. And I will give it to Hot. They were doing an amazing job at reinforcing and keeping these things full and making sure I was taking as bad trades as possible and exhausting my strength as quickly as possible. And it was rough. It was really rough. And this is like an example of my stupidity that I explained earlier, where you see this one march soloing and just melting. And I should have just pulled it off. But of course, like I was saying, I do control a lot of accounts. So of course, I wasn't super focused on my march hitting it. But either way, I should have had my marches gather around and when they were ready, maybe swarm it together, maybe have a rally come in, tank the main majority of the damage, and then swarm around that, you know, after the rally hit, you know, like, and it was just small stupid things small stupid mistakes that i made that i could have improved on and i can improve on and hopefully if this kind of situation happens again i will be able to think about it and be like you know this is something that i did last time and i can you know i can actually like make adjustments to and actually be smart about so yeah this is definitely something that i could have done better at and i mean you guys see how sloppy my swarms are here and that is a big mistake. You got to have your troops gathered up. You got to have your marches gathered up. You got to have your, you know, all your players gathered up for these grandiose swarms. Like if you're going to be doing something like this, at least in the situation that we're faced with, where like the just enemy is too strong, too strong for us, we got to be gathering, we got to be coordinating and we got to be smarter. And, and you know, it's just a simple mistake we made and I can't really say much about it. It was just a big L and we took that. So I do hope you guys kind of understand and I hope this kind of just 
I hope I hope this helps someone, right? Like I hope you guys kind of just take my knowledge and are able to use it. And I hope I'm not talking to myself and and this actually helps you guys. Like I hope my information in these videos and me blabbing actually just like really helps you guys knowledge wise, all that kind of stuff. But yeah, I don't know. I was being really stupid here and I mean you guys can tell and I just keep bashing myself, but it's true. It's just it's a big mistake I make again and again and I mean you guys do see me improving each island or sorry, each pump I and yeah I mean I mean I do improve but of course I still make a lot of classic mistakes and it's easier to say like oh I made this mistake I shouldn't have done this after the fact but you know of course of course it's like that I'm, I'm always gonna say that right and it, it's the same for everybody like you're always gonna make mistakes and you're always gonna see it afterwards and be like yo this was stupid but what do you do? I also want to mention that I will be doing Island Raid soon. So I hope you guys are interested and actually excited for that content and the videos that are going to be coming up with that. So if you guys are interested in that, you know, just let me know. And I will be hopefully streaming. I'm thinking about it. I'm not sure about it yet. If you guys are interested, maybe put it in the comments. I'm thinking about streaming on my computer and maybe doing like four accounts at once because like if i do six accounts while streaming i feel like i might crash you know what i mean or it might just be really hard for me and maybe hard on your eyes so i'd either do that or i'd like specifically focus one screen while i did multiple accounts just so you guys could like see and i would just chat with you guys i don't know it seems like something cool to do i, I was just watching chis school and i was like yo like why don't i do this but yeah this is about the 30 minute mark. I do think I'm going to disappear soon because I'm starving and I have done a few videos today for you guys. And I do think I deserve the 30 minute break um, as long as something exciting doesn't happen that I can't chat about here. Oh, but I do think I'm going to go soon. And I hope you guys are fine with that. You know, like I can't talk for an hour straight every time. It is not easy and I'm sweating. I'm sweating I'm sweating, I'm sweating, like, down there, if you guys know what I mean, if you guys catch my drift, not actually, but actually, <laughs> all right, all right, I'm sorry, guys, I think I'm just stupid, um, but I think my swarm actually started heating up here, I actually had my marches starting to come in together, which was good, but, I mean, this was too late, I already had, like, what, five, six, I'm just my main account's marches melting, and, like, like, the difference between my main account and my alts is pretty massive. So, the fact that I had this many marches melt was kind of insane. You actually see me running out of infantry here. I start running out of infantry in my marches, which is just actually, like, big rough. Like, that's actually kind of worrying. But, yeah, I mean, I don't know. The trades I take here are terrible. I get absolutely annihilated. I would have loved to see the defense reports that um pickle is taking on almost all of these swarms like i would have loved to see the reports because i feel like that would have been just disgusting i feel ah no that would have been so disgusting to look at i do go over the reports that i had at the end at least on my main account if you guys are interested you guys could skip to the end or you guys could watch the end whatever you guys want to do but yeah one part that we definitely lack in though is zombie farming and all that kind of stuff because we miss out on so many possible points i definitely need think that i need to like de designate one account to be farming on the left side or one account on the right side whatever it might be or just telling somebody one of my members maybe to try to farm those zombies of course they have a big fighting force usually holding those things down so it can be rough especially if they have numbers and in this case they did and we I, I do want to mention that one of our um our fours keep keeps registering people who aren't going to show up and and you know i know aren't going to show up so it's kind of frustrating because honestly we wouldn't be fighting like some of these opponents and we'd probably be getting easier opponents who have you know maybe less people or just people more our size and you know the average would be like kind of closer so it's a little frustrating sometimes to actually be paired with these people when we probably wouldn't be paired with them in like a general case right like so i'm actually thinking of um demoting this guy because of that like it's actually like really getting on my nerves and kind of frustrating when like they do that constantly you know but yeah um i don't know what i was saying oh yeah but they do have a lot more numbers and that is a big problem because even if we are able to like for example they might have three people going to each zombie area but the thing is we don't have the people to spare when they have like they're matching us 
maybe one for one or two for one on the field while able to gather, able to farm zombies, go to the incubator, whatever it might be. So the number difference is so massive here and them having like just more people to spread around is huge, like more mindset thing, more people to just go to different places and that that can just be like super game changing because like for example if we have 20 people compared to their t uh maybe 30 they could like set three people on like i said zombie farming on each side maybe have two people like farming nodes and maybe like two people going for incubator or just more right but basically the point is that they just have numbers and we get overwhelmed here and it is a big issue and they're able to keep these structures more reinforced than we would be able to because they have more people more marches more troops whatever it might be right and it's just it's one of the big issues that we're fight facing here and i mean what do you do the only structures we're really able to take is one, the one near my helipad that Pickle's holding, and two, the other like structures that Pickle isn't in. Like those are the only like actual bases or operation posts or outposts or whatever that we're able to take because Pickle is just a monster, and that is simple as that. It's just, it's just a really rough situation, and we can't do much about Pickle. <laughs> Because, I mean, like, the average player, like I said, isn't able to overwhelm a beast of this size. So, I think the best we could have done was take over these other bases or try to, like, walk around the map and, you know, take over these other operation bases. But the thing is, Pickle would have just tried to send another true, uh, another march, try to get in it, and then he would just be holding it again. And that was a problem I kept facing with the operation base near us, where he would just keep hopping in it, even if we had, like, a million troops... He would just send a full march and it would over it would take good trades and sometimes overwhelm it all by itself and just take over the operation base and it was just i mean like what do i do in that situation right and imagine if he's just rallying it right like we cannot take good trades to save our life and it is a rough situation but honestly there's no winning in this like i don't, I don't see us winning i don't see us winning here at least with how Pego was playing and i mean honestly i feel like i feel like their whole game actually like relied on pickle right like and i don't try to sound that say that like their team's weak but pickle was the kind of deciding factor in this battle right because it made me change up how i played it made me split up it made me play less defensive because honestly i knew there was no way i could defend these like outposts from pickle like especially if he's swarming it with multiple marches it would have been even worse so i thought that i had to play more like attacker like more of an more of an attacker than play as more defensive and i mean that kind of like that kind of messed me up i couldn't play defensive and it forced me to just kind of wiggle my way into their area you know and i did not want to play like this but what do you do what do you do and i think i'm actually gonna go soon i think i'm just gonna go guys because i am i'm about to die i'm about to die and i don't know what to talk about i mean i think you guys got the general point of this video though we did get smacked and it is really important to make sure you guys are actually super aware of who you have as garrison captains and that also applies outside of pompeii be it towers you know whatever it might be for you know if you're defending in highland raid like even having pickle for example holding a tower as garrison captain even if he's offline there's not much i would be able to do and overwhelm him right because as long as his team is able to reinforce properly he's gonna be taking good trades even if they can't stay reinforcing it he's gonna be taking good trades because i mean the tech difference is so huge and just having someone like that will decide if like your alliance is able to make it or break it because I'll, I'll give an example. So if I have um, 20, 50 million players and the enemy has, let's say, Pickle, right? Um, and they have maybe a bunch of, maybe 20, 30 million players. Well, we might be able to overwhelm their 30 million players and push them out. But if their players are able to just keep jumping in garrison, what can we do? Our 50 million players don't have the technology they don't have the heroes they don't have whatever it might be to overwhelm this guy and that would be just i feel like that's so game changing so if your team doesn't have a big core player it actually screws your team because your team can't do anything to kind of counter that like your team won't be able to counter that big massive whale and i feel like this is actually gonna be a problem when it comes to like events like island raid if you don't have a whale in your alliance and an alliance does have a whale it would make it hard um, especially if they're holding like, let's say 
I don't know what the thing is called, but it's like the equivalent of the Metro, right? If they're holding the main structure in the middle. Who's going to be able to rally that? Who's going to be able to swarm it? Who's going to be able to do whatever? Like, nobody's going to be able to really do anything to that building if you just have this tier six whale holding it and your team has nobody to, like, kind of out outpower them. Like, although I will say that this will probably, like, you do need an alliance behind you, of course, even if you are a whale. It kind of, like, you don't need as good of a team like you could be a two billion alliance and overwhelm like a three or four billion one if the average player in that three or four billion alliance is way weaker than that whale right like if you don't have anybody like as strong as that the point is like it's like you need that core member that core member is going to probably make or break how your team runs how how good they're going to do and i don't know i feel like i feel like i just wanted to kind of talk about that and mention like it's really going to be a lot of a lot of what's going to happen is going to depend on that player. And, you know, I try to say this a lot, but of course the player can't solo. You need a good team behind you. But either way, like having that player can make or break the battle. And a tier six player, just the presence of like these these monsters can change just how everything goes. So I do hope my explanation kind of made sense to some people. And I hope some, if you actually watched this far, that I did help you a bit and kind of understanding more about the game and just how to play it right so i do thank you guys for watching and honestly i'm gonna go now so i do and like i said i do thank you guys it's been 40 minutes you have 20 minutes left the last about five minutes will be just reports so i do thank you guys again for watching i hope you guys have an amazing day or night and you can enjoy this silent footage think of maybe play a video uh, maybe play some music on it that's up to you guys but i do thank you guys and it has been a pleasure doing this video peace out